Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the Ice ASTV, brought to our friends at Dogs Book Fields, Case Financial Group, Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, and of course, Toby Hockey. Tonight, I'm joined by two wonderful gentlemen out west. They're not getting hit by no snow by any means. They're looking forward to sun, ski, and hopefully some golf in the near future. Us, well, yeah, that's not going to happen. In the meantime, Darcy Hodge of, Internet, of IHA is joining me first to discuss the campaign of the 2021-22 season with all the teams just ending up this past month in Penticton, as well as the future for this upcoming ID development camp happening at the end of the month in April, early May. Then part two, Darcy's going to introduce us to the new U18 head coach to the program, Mr. Claude Vergrain. He will be discussing with us the importance of his hire as well as what he's going to bring to the team and to the program at IHA. Certainly a man of many years of hockey. Love looking to over his hockey cards as well as discussing this with him in part two of our show. So please welcome both Darcy Hodge and Claude Villegrain of IHA of the CSSHL. As promised, Mr. Darcy Hodge of IHA. Darcy, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing in Calgary? How is the weather? Because we're getting hammered here right now. Well, it's uh, it's not as nice as it was last week when it was in the uh, mid twenties and people were golfing. So <laughs> we are back into some negative uh, temperatures, but uh, thankfully, no no flakes are falling. So we're we're uh, we're going in the right. We're trending in the right direction. Trying to get in the right direction, of course. Uh, quite a busy season for everybody uh, in the CSHL, including yourselves. Tell us a little about this year, how it went for the program, and some of the highlights that we should know about of the 21-22 campaign. Well, unfortunately, our season was not as strong as we were hoping. Um, it was a bit of a uh, a bit of a trying time again, coming out of the whole COVID protocol and. And recruiting last season was uh, was tough. So uh, the boys are they had a they had a good personal development year, we believe. But unfortunately, when you play in in one of the best leagues in Canada and against uh, some of the top teams in Canada on a overbalanced system where you have to play, you know three or four of the top 10 teams in Canada for like 75, 80% of your uh, season. It makes it, it makes it a grind on certain days. It does make it a grind, but we feel that uh, the boys have done fairly well uh, personally with their, their development growth, which in the end, uh, you know, U18 hockey is still development, right? Very, very, very few are going from here anywhere other than to whatever the next level may be juniors college. Uh, so, I believe we're getting some prepared. I believe we will have uh, two or three signings this summer for uh, for all, for junior teams, which is uh, it's a bit of a testament to to the program and uh, and the development that they had this year. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about this hockey, these academies that are involved. They're breeding a student athlete that is unsurpassed by anybody, as far as I'm concerned, and that development professionally on and off the ice is an testament to the programs, including yours at IHA, to get the players to the next level. Uh, speaking of the next level, we have some tremendous news to include into today's show. Uh, it involves the U18 program. Give us a little bit of detail of the U18 program, the hiring process, and who is joining the IHA come the fall. Or actually, now, because he's got work to do. He does have work to do, yeah. So for the last couple of weeks, uh, the ownership group has been talking to some some candidates, and uh, they have selected uh, the one that we'll, we'll announce here shortly, and we are very excited to have him on. He brings a, a very deep resume.
We have a, uh, he has a very deep resume from a coaching perspective, from a playing perspective. Uh, he's familiar with, with academies. He works with a, an agency. Uh, we're hoping that his recruiting and his, his connections in and around the, the Calgary and Alberta and Canadian landscape will, will lend us to, to become a more competitive program on the ice. We have worked very hard over the last three, four seasons to, to make the program what the program is or better. Our schooling system is, is the top ranked CSSHL schooling system in Alberta as per the, the, the uh, rankings from, from the, Oh, I can't remember the name of the uh, the program that does all the rankings of the schools, but we're ranked in the top 30. I believe we're number 32 out of 260 some schools in, in all of uh, Alberta. Wow. And we are the top ranked CSSHL school for academics. We have done things like built the, the boys a players lounge this year where they have a place to go and study. They have a place to relax and play ping pong or play some video games or just watch television or or eat their lunches or hang around after school is over so by putting this all together one of the big pieces that we're still looking for is somebody that could help us do some uh, some really good recruiting and and bring us a very strong background and and with that we believe we found him in in Claude Vilgrain. Claude is certainly a man that's got a resume longer than mine probably longer than yours uh <laughs> I look forward to discussing with him. When you first talked to him or found his name on the selection of the candidate list, Darcy, what were your first impressions and what were you, uh, what were you most surprised about? Well, I think we were probably the most surprised that he was, he was available. He did have other options, and, uh, but he, he chose to go a different route with a more structured system than, than anything in terms of expansion. And I mean, Claude and I have, have passed numerous times in the hallways and exchanged pleasantries. So it was really, it was really refreshing when, when he actually was available and responsive to having a conversation about coming on as our U18 coach. Well, I look forward to chatting with him. Is there anything I need to worry about Darcy? Is he going <laughs> to, what's he going to surprise? I've got some surprising questions for him, but I look forward to chatting with him. What's the biggest What's the biggest thing you're looking for Claude to bring to the program in his first year and for the future? I think one of the biggest things, uh, my conversations with Claude, um, you know, we, we've talked a little bit of, of theory of the game. We've talked his concepts of the game. We've talked what he plans on bringing to the game. Um, we've also had to, you know, we've also talked about, you know, the IHA expectations what the coach's expectations are. And I think the one of the biggest things we're going to bring to him is he, he, he brings a really strong skill set. He's been a Hockey Canada skills instructor for a lot of years. So there's going to be a really good group of, of skills and, and skills training that he will bring to the table, as well as his coach mentorship for not only the internal program, but his coach mentorship on the outside of our program and the people that he can reach out and talk to if if need be. Well, I'll leave it at that, Darcy, because I've got great questions to ask, Claude. Uh, I want to thank you for your time in introducing us to the new U18 coach this year. And uh, after the break, ladies and gentlemen, we will welcome Mr. Claude Vilgrain to the On the Ice product here and hopefully we'll get to talk to him throughout the season again darcy thanks so much i know you got a tea time or something coming up here in the next <laughs> little bit but uh hopefully the clubs are shiny and the sticks are put away for the season well we got our evals coming up and then after that we'll see how how busy of a summer it really will be that's right before i let it before i do get to Claude, tell me a little bit about development camp that's happening uh, at the end of the month april 29th to may 1st yeah, so April 29 to May 1, we'll be having our open evaluations for our U18, U17 programs. Uh, right now, it's it's got a very strong group of kids, it appears, that are that are going to be joining us. 
Uh, we are up against a couple Alberta Junior Hockey League camps at the same time. So we have some kids that are very interested in the program, but have previous commitments to junior programs. So we feel that it's going to be, uh, it'll be a strong camp. It might be one of our more attended camps, which would be excellent. Um, if anybody wants any more information on the program, intalkie.ca has the information. If not, you can click a link there, send me a note. I'll be happy to send you information on our program and a registration form for the camp if you're so inclined to join us. And that's happening at the Winsport Pro, uh, facility as well? Awesome. Everything we do is at the Winsport facility. Yes, our schooling and everything is right there. Absolutely gorgeous facility. Um, look forward to seeing it at the end of at the beginning of next month when I root cruise down Calgary, I hope. I'll let you go, Darcy. Up next, Claude, Claude Vilgrain with us, the new U18 head coach. Stay with us here on the ice. As promised, the one, the only, the new U18 male head coach of the IHA program, Mr. Claude Vilgrain. Thank you for joining me. I'm sure you've been busy with a lot of different interviews and processes over the last little bit, but I hope you don't get tired of them. Oh, no. It's part of my job, actually. <laughs> How has it been in Calgary? Have you been to Calgary a long time? Have you, do you reside in Calgary? Tell me how this whole process for you began. Yeah, so I was based here with the national team from 86 to 88, the Olympics in 88. And in 86, I met my wife. And then uh, when I retired, we decided to come back here. Um, she's from Castlegar, BC, but she was working here at the time. And uh, I really enjoyed Calgary. Uh, I enjoyed going to Banff and Canmore. And then and I liked the people here and then the opportunities as well. So uh, we decided to uh, come back and live in Calgary. Your travels into the beautiful country of Canada didn't start on the West coast or the Western part of the provinces. You're actually in Quebec for most of your uh, early years, grew up playing hockey there uh, as well as not only going to the Q in Laval, but also playing university hockey with the university of Moncton. Tell me what the difference is between both of those leagues growing up and what made you do both? Well, um, so that's, first of all, it was a surprise for me making the junior team. I wasn't expecting to be drafted. And uh, I went to camp. I made the team, had a successful three years. Got that drafted by Detroit. And then two weeks after the draft, they, just, uh, they sold the team to uh, the Illich family, uh, Little Caesar uh, pizza guy. <laughs> and uh, there's so many uh, players in the organization from Kalamazoo to Adirondack. Uh, they, they decided to... Uh, they didn't draft me, and they, they kind of dropped all the draft picks. So that was hard. They only kept uh, Murray Craven, it, who they ended up um, um, trade trade to uh, the Flyers. And uh, from after my last season uh, junior, I decided to go to um, university. Uh, I was at the national team camp, and uh, Jean Perron was the assistant coach of Dave King, and got to chat with him. And after the camp, he... Uh, Send me the information to go to Moncton and I had three great years as well there. And then from there, I got invited to Team Canada again. So that's a little bit the path. Did you enjoy wearing the maple leaf on the front? What did that feel like in 86, 87, 88, playing for the nation and getting to represent uh, Canada in probably one of the most prestigious times of the year? Yeah, oh, that was uh, amazing. From 86 until the Olympics, we traveled the world. From Alaska to Japan, Russia, we went through all the small town USA, small town Canada, playing a lot of hockey, uh, trying to sell the Olympics. And then, and you know, I, I saw all kind of hockey, different team, different, uh, different way of life. And that was an unbelievable experience. And obviously the Olympics were second to none. Absolutely. Playing in 88 in Calgary, which was kind of pretty impressive. Do you remember your line mates, Claude? Were you a forward or defenseman? I think you were a forward. I was a forward. 
as a fourth. So what happened was, um, I know Dave King's been trying to look for uh, NHL players uh, for the team, and then uh, he's been trying for a while. And then maybe I would say ten days before the Olympics, he uh, he got uh, Steve Tambellini and then uh, Jim Jim Papensky, and he decided to put them on my line. So that was a little different, you know. We spent two years working a system, and then you play with guys that are more straightforward and. And but uh, yeah, so those were my line mate, and not for two years though, but just for that Olympics. So that was a little adjustment for sure. Little adjustment, I would agree. Yes. So after the Olympics, then you had a couple of years bouncing around, went to Vancouver. Your first year was the NHL was with the Canucks organization. Yeah. And uh, tell us about your first game getting on the ice and what it felt like stepping in front of thousands of players, people. Well, this I couldn't wait. You know, you grew up you know, dreaming to play in the NHL. I remember sitting, uh, going into the dressing room after a stretch, and my jersey was there with my name on it beside Tony Tanti and Stan Smeal, and it, it was surreal. So uh, uh, I sat down, I looked at my name, I put a jersey on, and my second shift scored my first NHL goal, so I thought I was going to play 20 years in the NHL. But I learned fast that that doesn't work like that. <laughs> No, it doesn't. It certainly doesn't work like that. But that's quite an amazing story. I mean, you see Tanti and Smale, uh, the heydays. I mean, you had a young Trevor Linden, and you had a McLean and Nett. You had, you know, did you have the old? Which was your favorite Canucks jersey to wear? Was it the uh, the skate, or did you like the old V in the front? Well, I, I we play with the yellow uh, jerseys with the skate, so. The black one, you know, I was in Vancouver uh, a month ago dropping the puck, and, and the team was wearing the, the retro black jersey, and it looks so sharp. It looks so sharp, and and I forgot how sharp it looked. I just remember uh, the yellow jersey, but I think that's, uh, you know, I like that jersey the best. Absolutely. No, it's a, it's a classic. It's in the top five of my favorites, I think. No one really likes it because it looks kind of like, doesn't look the greatest, but it's just retro. Like it's right there, and it's got a style like anything yeah, else. He, some of the jersey you gotta go we'll see them live. It's like when the Flames went back to their red and gold ones, and they look sharp. You know, you see you see the Devils when they use a retro jersey. Some of the jersey looks so much nicer now than they did back then. So, but uh, yeah, you see them live is different. So in Calgary, you go to Vancouver, you play a little of Vancouver. First skill testing question for you, Claude. Are you ready? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go remember ahead. going from Vancouver to New Jersey, you got traded. Do you remember who you got traded for? Timmy Lenarden. Why is the, it that players, when they get traded, they remember who they get traded for? Is it because you want to see how well the trade works out? Or no, if the guy is going to work out friends. better than you? Or why does that why does that always? Yeah, because he's one of my friends. So I wasn't traded yet. Uh, I got sent down to Milwaukee, the Canucks farm team, and I was playing very well. But I was playing too well. I wasn't in the plans anymore, and they wanted to play the young guys. So uh, they decided to send – the funny thing is I, I went three weeks in a row uh, to uh, Hockey News Player of the Week, Minor League Player of the Week. So – by the by, the third week uh, they uh, decided to send me on a loan um, to uh, Utica, New York. So uh, I went from a twenty-five and four record a team to a one fifteen and and one, and then with Tommy McVie, uh, the coach uh, at the time. So we won fifteen straights, and then and finally they, they decided to trade me uh, at the end. But during that time, uh, Timmy was our captain, and it was sometime on my line and. He's a good friend. So uh, I found out that uh, about the trade, and I was looking for him everywhere. We didn't have uh, cell phones or nothing back then. So I had to go to all the bars we used to hang, so I finally found him. So, uh, well, that was that was hard. You know, he was a favorite of the team, and all of a sudden he's leaving. So that's all. That's that's why I remember. And I see him the odd time. He's a scout for uh, the Canucks, I think, still. So. Yeah. That's a fantastic story that you kept in touch with. Them. That's awesome. Claude, playing in New Jersey, had your best year. I mean, not it wasn't a slouch of a year. I mean, 41 points, plus 23. I mean, that's that's pretty very respectful. I mean, uh, do you remember your line mates in New Jersey? And what was it like playing in New Jersey compared to Vancouver? Yeah, well, that was great. Uh, that was the uh, the time when the, the Russians uh, came over. 
Fetisov, Kazatona, for C-Mac. And uh, <clears throat> for the longest time, I couldn't make the team because playing right wing I had to uh, compete with Shanahan, McLean, Claude Lemieux, Stefan Richet. So that one year, uh, Tommy McVie went up and uh, he, they decided to try me on the left wing, on my off wing. And at camp, I, uh, I played what, uh, 10 games, 10 games. And I would play a game with Team A in Boston and then jump on the private jet of the owner to go play with Team B in uh, San Diego. So they really wanted for me as a left wing. And and then the first game of the year, I'm playing with uh, Peter Stashney and Claude Lemieux. So that's how I started the, uh, for after season. And the other half, I played mainly with uh, Stéphane Richet. And uh, the coach wanted me to babysit him a little bit, so to speak on the defensive side of the game. <laughs> we'll leave that story for off the air, perhaps, because I know yes, I got time to get a little bit wild, no doubt. Yep. You've been very blessed having great line mates, Claude. Uh, why is that? It's because your style of play, was it the style you brought to the game? Yeah, well, exactly that. Uh, I could never get called up to play on the third or fourth line. I think at that time in the organization, outside the main uh uh, the main team, I was maybe the only one that could uh, play with the uh, the two top lines. Every time I would get called up, you know, I would I would fly from Utica to Philadelphia. First shift, I'm with Peter Stashny or Patrick Sundstrom or, you know, right right away on top line. And I was the only one that can, could really play right away and be really uh, a good support to those guys. So uh, that's what Luke keeps kept telling me <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so... That's that's one of the reason I uh, with the the flyers they would call me up to play on the third or fourth line barely any shift so I was kind of useless uh, you know because of my style of play. Throughout your playing career, when did you realize you were going to move more into a coaching role, or was that something you wanted to do from the get go? Oh, I hated that. I hated working in a hockey school too. Um, so what happened was. Uh, after I retired, um, I remember uh, I was going to the gym, try to keep in shape. And then there was a, a, a man that uh, he was training there. He knew me from the Olympics because he worked for ATV at the time. He was a camera guy. And he was telling me all the stories about his son's team, double A midget, that couldn't win, the coaches weren't good, and stuff like that. I, 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 I would hear the stories every day. And one time he came uh, after we got back to the sauna, he chased me down and says, hey, we, we fired the coaches. Can you come and help? There's a young coach there, but he needs help. And I said, I hate coaching. So I went there and the five minutes into it, I saw I could help. There's so many things they didn't know. I couldn't remember that level. And then finally I decided to stick around and coach. And then the team started to win games. It went from losing 15 nothing to tie games and to win some. And we almost won a tournament with Tasco. So uh, fast forward to summertime, my, one of my neighbors is saying, well, nobody wants to coach our uh, kids, uh, peewee kid uh, uh, for spring hockey. And could you come and help? And I said, yeah, you know, I was curious. So I did that and enjoyed that as well. And then my daughter decided she wanted to play hockey after watching the 2002 Olympics when the women one against the U.S. and all of a sudden I was as a coach and you know every time I coach I could see I brought something uh, different and uh, I could see the kids improving and I thought it was fantastic. That's amazing. And now we go through all the ranks. You're working with Hockey Canada, Hockey Development, and your phone rings to come and join IHA. Yeah. What was that process like for you? Well. I uh, the, so four years ago, the last time I coached at the AAA level, and uh, with within uh, that time, I I, I worked on my game. I, I I I was going to all the symposium, uh, coaching symposium, uh, with BIPOC uh, coaching uh, 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 NHL association. I, I'm a I'm a member of that, so. Uh, we're in a, we uh, we're Zoom calls with coaches in the NHL all the time. I got tons of ideas. And then when the, the door opened here, I thought, hey, this is a good league. And that team, uh, you know, seems like they need some help. And 
I thought I could, I, I think I could bring something and a lot of experience. And, and my philosophy is always, uh, you know, whatever I teach, it's like the next level is the NHL. I'm skipping Bantam, Midget, you know, junior. And my biggest thing is uh, development. I want to make sure kids uh, understand the principles, of the different situation, the principle of the game. And uh, by doing this, uh, we're successful anyway because they're better players more confident and then uh, yeah so that's that that's that's the way i see it certainly no no uh, slouch at all being a part of that bipoc program with the nhl what does that do for all coaches and members of that uh the nhl coaching association and being the resource that it needs to be uh for coaches that are looking to get involved and just like yourself, continue to work on development of young players. Yeah, it's good networking uh, uh, um, uh, platform. A lot of kids we connect with other other coaches, NHL coaches or college coaches, and uh, we got some got jobs in the American League, or we got good stories. And what I like the most is uh, when we uh, we uh, we we got those. Uh, the Zoom call, we're in a dressing, we're in a coaching room, listening to the coach, getting prepared for a practice or a game, and then they answer questions. And then I always, you know, I always been a coach, you know, that uh, had great ideas and stuff like that, but I could never compare. I, I never had a coach, uh, an assistant coach or a coach with more experience than myself. So I always wanted to know where I, I, I stood in term of uh, my uh, uh, abilities to to be able to coach, so but uh, this is a big help and then very interesting. So you've signed with IHA technically. You're yeah. the new head coach. Do you have help yet? Do you have an assistant coach? Or is that part of the game plan in the near future here? And yeah. What are your plans for this summer? Well, for this summer, I'm so, I'm, I'm working on the skills development with. Uh, for the rest of the school year with the kids and then uh, get to know the kids and then and working on um, recruiting. So we got some good traction there. I'm pretty hopeful we're going to have a very competitive team on the ice. And then, uh, yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, so assistant coach, uh, we're working on that as well. I know Darcy, I think, and uh, got a couple of resumes, a good candidate. So, it's going to be a situation that uh, I'm going to um, talk about my philosophy and then working with Jason as well, the U817 coach, so we could be on the same, same wavelength and uh, create a good path for the U17 kids to be ready to jump into the U18. Claude, explain a little bit how challenging it is to get the best talent when you consider all of the other choices in Alberta why is IHA one of those? Why should IHA be included in that discussion as being a top choice for players to play somewhere like IHA? Yeah, he should be included for sure. Uh, the schooling is very good. Um, I saw we got a lounge there, and the facility at Windsport is second to none. Um, a, a, a lot of kids, if you look at the, uh, the top U15, U16, U17 players, the next step for them, they all want to play uh, U18, and there's not that many choices in Calgary. Well, you, you got the quadrant, and you could have a good coaching, a good program on a quadrant level. Uh, you got the edge of the world, a uh, place like Edge. But the other places would be uh, outside the Calgary, and sometimes the parents want to keep, want to keep their kids uh, in Calgary. So if we could uh, uh, get the program on a good foot, uh, starting a good foot, and I'm sure we're gonna. You could attract a lot of a lot of players, and uh, so you know you play U18, and then you're in a good league, and we're going to make that program for sure, like one of the top around Calgary or Western Canada. If it's not local players in Calgary that you're looking to seek, are we still looking outside Alberta, potentially North America, overseas? to bring in players for the upcoming season? We could always, uh, well, you know, we're open to anything, but my my goal would be like have the kids from uh, Alberta, the kids from Calgary or Southern Alberta. Uh, you know, we, we got a lot of good players here 
uh, good enough to make a very competitive team. I know like in BC, in those places, they, they, they got people coming from everywhere. But if we need to uh, fill the, uh, the the roster, we need some more players. Uh, obviously, uh, I'll be welcoming people from out of town, out of the province. What are you most looking forward to to the first camp you'll be involved with at the end of the month, the development yeah. camp for the U17 teams? What are you looking best forward to? Yeah, I want to see the skill set, uh, uh, the determination, and just a camp that you don't know if a, a, a kid's trying out, it just trying out for just a skate or just to by curiosity. But I want to see who's, uh, who's um, very committed. Who, uh, who works hard, who wants, it seems like they want to be there. So the main thing for me, uh, I select a team, 20 players. I want to make sure that uh, they want to be there. They're committed to go hard. They, and then because I, I, I play everybody, I want everybody to get better. I don't want I, I don't want people that, eh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'll go here because I got nothing else to go. So, but uh, yeah, so that's why I, Body language is a big thing. I, obviously, I'm looking at skill, fitness, uh, uh, speed, and body language. Uh, when they come off the ice, get on the ice, the way they interact with their teammates, and that's a big thing for me. Playing for passion or playing with skill, what would you rather take? Passion. Can, yeah, passion. You could go a long way with passion. I've seen uh, hockey. Um, I did – Three, um, three uh, hockey, uh, Alberta, sorry, Alberta Cup uh, tournaments, and uh, I always ended up um, choosing some double A players as opposed to triple A. First, first because I didn't know who the players were because they let never let me uh, coach a team in, in my quadrant, and second, it's for me it's performance on demand, short short term competition. I want to know who's showing up, who wants to be there, and sometimes the skill. Players, they they look at the hierarchy. This, oh, I'm, I don't want a team for sure. And they get a big surprise when they take a, a couple of double A kids, and and they do uh, they do very well in the tournament because uh, you know they want to be there, and the, I have the perfect system for them. Perfect. What kind of coach are you going to be, Claude? Yeah. Well, my biggest thing is make the kids better. Uh, uh, every time I try to uh, I prepare a practice plan, um, my, my, my focus is um, I, I'm, uh, uh, how am I going to get them better? I, I want them to compete, use the speed, play as a team, and, I, and, and the door is open. You know, I want them to feel comfortable with me, ask questions. And, and uh, the only time I get very mad or I sit a guy on the bench is just because of attitude. Attitude is a big thing for me. Growing up, who is your favorite player to watch on TV or in person? Yeah, oh, <laughs> coming from Quebec City, uh, uh, Guy Lafleur was my idol, so I have nobody else to look up to. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, Montreal won a couple of times. They went on four to five winning uh, Stanley Cups uh, streak, and and Guy Lafleur, I, I love the way he played. So he was my idol for sure. Absolutely. Uh, growing up, did you have a favorite coach by chance? Well, at my last year midget, uh, my uh, my coach was so nice, and you could tell. Like, and I, I tried to uh, uh, um, use some of the stuff he used to do. Uh, he was a players coach, and uh, we felt we felt uh, safe, and uh, and. Uh, uh, we were we we know we were improving. Uh, our team wasn't very good. We finished eight, but we ended up uh, surprising everybody at the end and went to provincial and won the provincial. So, uh, so he was uh, the midget coach was one of my uh, favorite ones. Claude, last question before I let you go. Uh, the landscape and the philosophy of this sport has changed considerably over the last 10, 15 years uh, for the good. <laughs> How important is it to have this sport that we love so much to be so inclusive and give so much opportunity to everybody to play? And why do you feel like you are one of those ambassadors to the game now? Well, I feel like, uh, you know, you got slowly less and less people are playing. Uh, they got other options. You know, you got the Raptors, basketball kids. 
are, are leaning towards basketball. Now you'll see kids leaning towards soccer with the success of the uh, Canadian teams and uh, more and more kids are playing lacrosse. And uh, so there's a lot of frustration around hockey uh, for maybe because of uh, coaching, coaching or uh, parents' involvement, stuff like that. But uh, there's a lot of kids. I get calls all the time with kids who so go to penalty box and uh, uh, no parents in the in the box in the score box like making comments. Uh, and and uh, for me, when I retired, I went through uh, you know. I had, a, I had a great career, career. We're talking about my hockey DB and elite prospect, but it wasn't easy. And I don't want uh, the kids to uh, go through that. And uh, every time I go to the rink, I can see, I see a, a little black kid on the ice, for example. I see it's a little Clody. And I, I'm hoping that uh, he's enjoying the game because at the end of the day, he goes to the rink like any other kids, and he just wants to play. He want, his idol might be McDavid, Goudreau, what have you. He's just like another kid. And uh, I know it's not the case for other people. They don't see that, that those kids as uh, just another one. But my thing is uh, I, I'm involved with uh, the uh, diversity, NHL diversity, uh, Hockey Alberta, uh, equality and diversity as well on the committee there. And we want to make sure that uh, everybody, no matter the uh, ethnicity, uh, uh, religion, what have you, is uh, has a chance to be a hockey player and have fun. Mainly. Certainly there are tremendous avenues to a lot of different sport, and hockey should be one of those included. Claude, Bill Green, I want to thank you for your time today. I know you're a busy man. I uh, really appreciate it. And hopefully get the chance to sit down with you when the season is about to begin and to get yeah. some ideas and get an idea how things are running for you. Sounds good. And make sure you find those hockey cards. <laughs> I will do. I will look through them some more next time, but I think they're, yeah. they might be worth a little bit too. I think they're, I think the last time I checked the upper deck ones are about two bucks. So next time oh, I find yeah. one, I'll uh, bring it oh, up. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man, a very humble done. gentleman. I know you're going to do great things with IHA. Really congratulations again to joining the program and good luck in the off season, putting the team together. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. You're welcome. And that'll wrap up today's episode here on the ice on ASTV. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Once again, Dokes Book Fields, Case Financial Group, Toby Hockey and the Padamon Hockey Academy. Check us out Tuesdays and Thursdays, bringing more goodness to the greatness here on the ice ASTV. Take care of your neighbors, take care of yourselves and make sure you have a good one out there. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye-bye for now. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment.